Well, welcome or welcome back. Now, this episode's probably going to be a little all over the place because I think it's been like three weekends since I put out a video and all of this stuff that's going in this one will be over those three weekends. It's going to be all over the place and it's going to be real fun to try to edit this, but well, let's just get into it. <laughs> Y'all try to follow along. And that's the best we could do, I guess. I don't even know if I've already shot an intro or not, so here's this. This is the third weekend already. Well, it was supposed to be a high of 59 today, and then this morning, they changed it to a high of 55, and then at one o'clock, I checked again, they changed it, now it's a high of 45, and I still don't think it's gonna get to 45. So, since I hate to waste time and I always have to feel like I'm doing something, I'm gonna go ahead and replace our battery connectors, the ones on there now. They're pretty beat up, like they've been hammered on and off of there without actually being like loosened or tightened around the post. So, got four of these. We're gonna replace all four of them on the batteries. That should just still give us a little bit more guarantee that we won't have any more electrical issues on the batteries or posts or whatever there. So there's a look at our old ones. Quite used up and banged up and rusting and there's our new ones. And now these definitely clamp on. I have no issues with uh, any of these moving around now. So now I'm going to put the seat back on and hopefully not have to take it off again for a very long time. Well, shoot. So, this is all ice on here now. Yesterday I got some help taking off a roof rack here. Went ahead and drilled out our holes on our plates. I have them covered up right now because I do, I didn't want the foam that I put on here to get wet and frozen and stuff as well. I didn't know how well it would put up, the adhesive on it would put up with the water and freezing. They had said that there may be like a little bit of rain this morning, but I didn't know it was going to be less than 20 degrees outside. So all our water that did fall just froze onto our pipe there. So we had it laying out here. I got the top of it sprayed with our paint there. I was going to flip it over and paint the other side, but I ran out of time yesterday. So I just left it here. I was going was, was to come out this morning, wipe it all back down and then uh, have some help flipping it over and once it warmed up some I was going to spray the top. Now I have to wait a little bit longer. Yep, still windy, but we got the rack on. It's all painted. It's still fully curing because it, I mean, it, it's just cured enough to be able to handle, but not to use fully. We got the plates made. Everything's bolted down now. I didn't have the right size bolts for the sides here, so I got to get some for that still. Well, everything's in place and it's all pretty sturdy, so I can sit here and move it and well, you probably can't tell, but the whole Humvee's moving. I haven't quite decided, but I might like the look of this better without the wagon back portion on it. But the wagon piece back there actually will serve a purpose, and it's, it kind of just looks blank right now. So we will get some more stuff to be mounted up on there. It'll help fill all the gaps in there and everything. Or at the least, we'll put another couple crossbars, one on each side. 
Well, before I put it up, I actually took this for a test drive and it seems like there's actually a secondary benefit to having this. Now, if you've ever driven a Humvee, you might kind of feel it as you're driving and stuff where the it feels like the body flexes a whole lot. And I mean, the whole body is aluminum and it's riveted together and everything. There is flex in the body. I didn't feel as much flex as I went over bumps and, and stuff on the road. It actually feels more solid of a vehicle now with that on there. I know it seems kind of weird. So I guess the roof rack kind of helps keep everything from tweaking as much. But look at what Harbor Freight sent us. Yeah, right. Like I have enough viewers for Harbor Freight to send me anything. I've just always wanted to get one of these to try to organize my tools a little bit more. So, well, I just broke down and got one. And you can see I've already got it stuffed with a lot of things. Of course, a lot of this isn't even in the right spot yet either. So I'm sure you could tell by some of the stuff down here, my little clamps here weren't working too well. They weren't, I don't know, it didn't seem like these were even putting as much pressure on those hoses as much as just a worm gear clamp. So I ended up just replacing it back with a worm gear clamp because I was getting still a little bit of a leak. And one of them even did fail like the day after I put this on and it leaked quite a bit. So I fixed that one and then I found another little leak and it seems to be all being caused by these types of clamps. So we're not using these clamps anymore. Well, our cover is holding up really well. Now, the only thing I can say about, well, yeah, you see how much uh, dust and stuff falls whenever it actually really blows here. So the only thing I could say about this that well it doesn't work well for me so the inside of this has this soft material so it doesn't scrape paint or anything the only issue is is it tries to velcro to my paint now it really doesn't create much issue because the roof rack up top kind of holds it off the top the only part that really sticks is going to be up here so i basically will roll it up from the back all the way to the front and then whenever I put it back on I roll it back off and back up over and it should do fine without too much tearing or anything of that under cloth material whatever it is kind of like a cotton or something but it covers the whole dang thing except for my wheels and now I have to take the back off and roll it up a little ways probably won't take it all the way off but today we are doing ball joints so my big box of goodies here I went ahead and ordered some different hose clamps these are from Mishimoto and they are well, hard to see let me open one up for you yeah well, there we go so these are just a little bit different style clamp it does have the raised edge on it so it won't cut your hose and it is a it's supposed to be a constant pressure style and these, I believe I'm able to torque down a little bit more than what I have on there. I think I've gotten all the little leaks stopped, but from the reviews of these, they sound like these fix a lot of people's issues with just slight seeping leaks, which is what I'm having. So we'll give those a shot if I find another leak. But on the other side of the box here, we have our ball joints. So I wanna go ahead and get these done. I'm sure, it, I'm sure most of the ball joints on here are good. They seem like they are, but I just want to go ahead and do a full replacement all the way around. This weekend, I'm just going to focus on the back. We'll focus on the front next time. And then I also have control arm bushings that I'm replacing as well. So this will be quite intensive. We're basically going to be taking almost the whole thing apart, putting it all the way back together, and hopefully everything works good. All right, we got the wheel and tire off. We do have jack stands under there. We have a jack on the back also. And then I'm using this in order to put some pressure on the A-arms there. You can see our shims in here and we actually have some pretty thick ones. We have spaced pretty good. So what we'll probably do is go ahead and take those out completely and tighten those back up. You have two bolts up top and two on the bottom on each of them. And then they do have nuts on the other side. Oh, it is a hot day today. Alrighty, let's, let's get this going.
But all right, we got the upper control arm out. The top ball joint didn't really want to come out very easy. It took a little persuasion for it to break loose, but it came loose. I have it tied up, so it's not uh, hanging on either of those there. I went ahead and pressed out our old bushings here. This one, not that bad. This one, however, really was kind of rusted in place. I don't know why it won't focus on this. There we go. But we ended up getting those out. So I ended up using basically just kind of method of using a long bolt. Uh, took me a while to get basically the correct diameter piece here in order to push those out. I just took actually some spare tubing I had here. This is stainless, so it's pretty strong. And well, let me grab the control arm and I'll show you how I did it. Well, as you can see, it's going to mess up the paint a little bit. And so I'm trying to prep this. I'll hit it all with some paint. But you basically take that stainless steel. It's going to go on this side. And then you need something flat that evenly will distribute the pressure along that. And then, of course, I had to use like multiple washers. If I had something that was thicker like that, that went all the way out, it would have been better, but I'm just using what I got. So all of that goes on this side, just like this, because that bushing needs to be pressed out this way. So the stainless steel tubing puts pressure around this, but it doesn't put pressure on that inside. So this basically all goes on this side. Well, then you have all of this and this basically goes up through the other side and it'll sit just perfectly. I don't know if you can see down there, there is just enough room for that to go up in there and push out our little bushing. If you can see down in there too, probably not going to work. There it goes. Just the slightest little ridge and that's what has, basically is what has the pressure there. Once it gets past that point, it pretty much just kind of pops out. So it actually took me a while to actually find one of those. As you can see, it's a really tight fit. Just has a little bit of play and that's what we want. It basically just puts pressure on this side of the collar and everything just pushes out this way. So in with all the new bushings, they have a little sheet here. It's from Energy Suspension. So it gives a little bit of instructions. It says the inside diameter is 1.675 and what we were looking for on a diameter of something to push it out was 1.625 and so that's what this is this is actually a little bit bigger than that 1.625 but i had something that was a little smaller and it wasn't going to work so found this cut it out i did end up polishing the side off a little bit just so it'll uh slip in there easier and use a lot of wd-40 or some type of penetrating oil so in the suspension kit, it does come with the Formula 5 pre-lube stuff. So you want to smother that all over there before you put those bushings in. There's two numbers on these and one's an outer, one's an inner. And it actually says on the inside here. So if you're doing these, it does have inner and outer. So basically the, the difficult part on the inner is remember it has that lip on the inside there. And that has to fit into this slot. So you're basically squeezing this through that opening and once it gets started of course it just slides in place and unlike the other end where it's all kind of one dimension all the way back so these outer ones slide in a lot easier Well, there we go we got the bushings all in place went ahead and put our sleeve on the inside too just blew it up push it in the same way and now i got fingerprints all over the control arm but i can wipe that off later well for some reason that was a to get back in but the control arms back in we also have our ball joint bolted up here torqued down so i need to torque down the control arm and then also go ahead and put it back in the hole so the bolts that came with my ball joints were these. And I decided to just go with some grade eight hardware after I had a failure of one of the nuts. Of course, I probably can't get it zoomed in enough, but that nut failed. 
stripped right out so I wasn't gonna play around with those I went ahead and went with some grade 8 shouldn't have any issue with that now so I did wait to torque the control arms up here until after I had the ball joints torqued down and then also our little uh, tie rod so the ball joints the castle nut on the bottom those are 73 foot pounds the tie rod there is 70 foot pounds not much difference in those and then our control arms up here are 260 foot pounds so these are going to be fun so the reason behind me not replacing the lower ball joint this is the upper ball joint it actually is still good it is very very solid there's no play in it so i probably will actually still keep this as a backup just in case and the lower ball joint seemed good as well once i had everything off there it was functioning just right i don't so right now i don't see a reason to replacing it it's not like i have a boot leaking or anything also the new ball joints i have for the lower don't have a grease fitting on it and these that are on it right now do so i like having a serviceable ball joint i'm going to keep those on well at least for now wheel and tire is ready to go back on well i ended up getting off early today so we're going to end up trying to knock out this other rear corner here same thing we did on the other side probably just the top ball joint check the bottom ball joint if it's bad we'll replace it too and then we'll pull the control arm replace the bushings and that put everything back together now this time i have one of these little things so this should help me pop those ball joints loose a little bit easier than just hammering away at it trying to let it fall out of there we also already have that tool made up to push the control arm bushings out of there so hopefully that goes easy with all of that out of the way we should be able to knock this thing out in just a couple hours few hours hopefully because i mean that's all i got before it starts getting dark anyway but let's get to it Freight. It's like $19, I think. Works for the Humvee. Might pick one up. I still don't know if that probably won't work on the bottom. However, I don't know. Maybe? Phew, I think it'll work on the bottom too. I got the control arm off of course pretty simple just loosen the bolts and then you can kind of wiggle them out of there I don't know why it always tries to focus in the background and I went ahead and took the ball joint off here so I could clean this up too you could tell it's just like just paint paint chipping everywhere 
Now my hand's dirty, so I can't touch the camera with this hand. But, all right, here's our setup. We have a very long bolt all the way through. And all, both, both sides of this, you're gonna wanna push from the inside out because these are pushed from the outside in. So, of course, you gotta push them out the other way. So when you set it up, like right now, I have it on there pretty good, but just loose enough to where I can move this around just a tiny bit, because you're gonna wanna make sure it is lined up perfectly around there. And then you just tighten it. So I'm gonna set y'all down the best I can. All right, give me a second. I gotta wipe my hands before I can set y'all up. Well, there we go, wheels back on, torque down, and that's gonna do it for today because it's getting late. And I guess tomorrow we'll try to tackle the front 